Hey everyone, this is Mason with FilterGrade, and today we're going to be talking about editing audio with Adobe Premiere Pro. That's right, Premiere Pro, not Audition, the dedicated audio editor in the Creative Cloud suite. Premiere Pro has plenty of great audio enhancements that can improve your video sound without ever jumping into another program. Bring bass back into your audio. A lot of audio recorded on cameras or cheap microphones can be pretty tinny and flat. You may think it's beyond saving, but there is a lot that we can do. Go to the effects panel, and search for parametric equalizer, then drag it onto your clip. An equalizer lets you play around with the different audio frequencies in your clip. If you've ever messed around with the bass and treble controls on a car stereo, then you're already familiar with a basic equalizer tool. Once you've applied the effect, go into the effects control panel and scroll down to custom setup. Click the edit button. This will pop up with a full equalizer control panel. The left side has your low end, the bass, and the right side has the high end, the treble. Here's what our clip sounds like right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The first thing you can do, especially on tinny audio, is adjusting the bass curve higher. You can mess around with the exact amount until it sounds good to you, but likely around 120 hertz should be a good starting point. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's how to fix tinny audio. The rest of these tips are more for audio recorded in standard microphones in more ideal environments rather than trying to save audio from a tinny recording. Compression. Compression is so named because it literally compresses an audio waveform lowering the volume of loud parts and raising the volume of quiet parts until the audio is fairly consistent. This helps make your audio sound so much better, especially voices. When talking, we tend to trail off or speak with inconsistent volume. Compression helps mitigate the unfortunate side effects of this natural way of speaking while also giving your audio more of a crisp sound. Go to the effects control panel and search for multiband compression. Here's what our clip sounds like right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Go into the effects control panel and click on edit. And here we see our multiband compressor interface. It comes with a lot of great presets that might work well for you, so start with one of those if you're not comfortable with advanced audio editing. And here's what happens when we use the broadcast preset. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Already a massive difference. This should bring up the overall volume and balance of your audio, but it will also bring up the volume of annoying bass and treble sounds, so we'll need to cut some of those off. To deal with the bass, take the bass section on the far left and lower the gain until those rough booming bass sounds start to disappear. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If your treble is too high, or you're getting a lot of annoying S sounds, you can do the same with the highest frequencies found on the right side. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You may also want to experiment with the low mids. This is where most of the human voice falls. Boosting this range can give your voices a brighter and more professional tone. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 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 While you're in the compressor, make sure your audio levels are alright. You can adjust the output gain to boost the volume of your audio clip. You can also utilize margin in the limiter tool to prevent yourself from peaking too much. Make sure the brick wall limiter box is checked and then try setting the margin to about minus three. This will make sure that your audio won't peak past minus three decibels. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Noise removal. The unfortunate part about compression is that it will introduce additional noise in the portions that were boosted. This is a side effect of applying additional gain. Let's denoise this clip that we just added compression on. Go into the effects panel and search for denoise. Go into the effects control panel and click on edit. The default settings should be a good starting point and will probably fix a lot of your noise problems. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In this case, we'll probably want to adjust that down a little bit because it's taking out too much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's pretty good. Now let's use an unedited clip that has a lot of noise. Here's what it sounds like right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The kind of noise the denoiser gets rid of in cases like this is consistent background noises like 
microphone hiss, or fairly consistent noise like computer fans. This won't magically erase background noises like people talking or cars honking. Now let's go and add the denoise to this clip and click on the edit button. With the default selected, let's see what that did. As you can see, almost none of the noise that we heard before is in the clip now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can move the slider around to adjust the amount of denoising, and you can also tell Premiere Pro which frequencies the noise occupies. By default, Premiere is checking all frequencies, which can be effective in many cases, but has a higher chance of degrading your overall audio quality. A hissing sound might occupy only the higher frequencies, so you can tell Premiere to only look there, and then adjust the amount to see if we're able to scrub away the noise that way. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're not sure if the tool is removing too much of your original audio, you can click on the output noise only box and hear if much of your original audio is being cut out. In this case, we hear most of the noise is being removed and only a little bit of my actual voice. Reverb removal. Removing reverb works much the same. Search for and apply the effect D-Reverb. Here's what our clip sounds like right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's click on the edit button in the D-Reverb tool. Adjust the slider until you're happy with the result. Here's what default sounds like. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In addition to adjusting the amount, you can also adjust the frequency if you're comfortable, just like in the denoise tool. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The auto gain toggle will try to restore the overall volume of the clip as reducing reverb will result in a lower volume audio track. Working with audio in larger projects. So far, we've covered how to apply these effects to individual clips, but if you're working on something long with many clips like a podcast, you probably don't wanna to have to apply the effect to every clip one by one. There is an easier way, which lets you apply an audio effect to the entire audio track in your entire project. To access this, click on Window, and make sure that Audio Track Mixer is selected. For whichever track you want to apply the effect to, click on the drop-down menu and you will see a list of effects. These are the same audio effects that you have access to normally. You can add the denoiser, the compressor, or any other effect. Double-click on the effect, and you'll see the same control panel that we saw before. And of course, you can add multiple effects on top of each other. So you could use a denoiser and a compressor in conjunction. These were some simple tips for making your audio sound better in Adobe Premiere Pro without ever leaving the program. Premiere has all of the tools and presets that its counterpart Audition has, and using them in your video edits can greatly increase the quality of your production, especially in things like vlogs, podcasts, or audio that was recorded in an unideal environment. Let us know in the comments below what other audio lessons you'd like from FilterGrade, or anything we may have skipped over in this tutorial that we should cover in the future. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for professional LUTs, Lightroom desktop and mobile presets, Premiere Pro templates, and more photo and video education, visit filtergrade.com today.